A Montessori classroom is certainly not a place where we teach all the children at the same time. So our typical three-hour morning work period consists of teaching a small, small groups of children at different times, while simultaneously the other children are doing their, their work. And their work is dictated by what lessons they've had and what plans they've made for themselves in connection with their teachers. The idea of teaching the whole class at the same time is a really non-human concept. Humans don't work that way. When you take a group of, of, of students and ask them to complete the same thing at the same time, it, it, won't, it won't work. What ends up happening inevitably is some children finish quickly and then they become bored. Other children finish very slowly and then they become humiliated because everyone's waiting for them. Boredom and humiliation are not good conditions for learning. And so that's why we teach children at different times and at their pace. We have an IEP, what's called an individual education plan for every single child, not just the group as a whole. So that requires a lot of independence and responsibility of the child. How on earth are they going to remember how to finish all of their work on their own? Well, the teacher will guide them to that. We have weekly conferences. They have many organizational tools, their work lists, their lesson lists. They start to learn how long a project should take and when their deadline should be. And they make decisions in connections with their teacher on when, when the, they can meet a deadline. And then they need to stick to it and follow through. That type of independence is so profound because later in life they won't have their parents, they won't have their teachers telling them what to do, when, how much, and so forth. They'll have to make those decisions on their own. So why not start when you're six years old learning how to do that? That's, that's what we mean when we say independence, but independence comes with a great, great amount of responsibility and the freedom of independence comes with a great responsibility. Um, the children are really up for this task. They love to be in charge of themselves. They do not like to be told what to do. They don't mind the advice or the guidance, but in a way that is respectful of their, their human dignity that they can, they can truly do it themselves. Th and this segues into the idea of intrinsic motivation. And that's why at Escuela and in Montessori, we tend not to give uh, external rewards. We don't have a reward and punishment system, and we don't give grades because the child can become rewarded by the work itself. Imagine that. It's true. It's very, very true. The children, if you give them the appropriate task that's appropriate to them and their type of learning, then they can complete it and feel a great sense of satisfaction. I have children who ask to stay in from recess sometimes because they're working on a project that's very important to them and they don't need their, research, their, their recess. That's what they need is to do their work. So that's the idea. It's the idea of intrinsic motivation is that it comes from within and that it's a natural part of their learning. You think back to your own school experience and your own, your own past and the things that you remember guaranteed are going to be those really special book reports you did or that really special project that maybe you chose to do yourself or some, some sort of creative process that meant something to you that was different than the standard worksheet or direction that you were given from your teacher. So our job is to present the concepts. We have to present the concepts in every subject area on everything that they need to know in life. And then we ask them to explore the concept and they have materials they can use and then their own creativity. But they have to okay it with us first. They have to negotiate with us and learn how to compromise and make a decision that's upon a work that's appropriate in exploring these concepts. For example, I have a group of students who are learning about quadrilaterals, right? And the way that I start is I teach them what a quadrilateral is and they learn the language. They learn that in Greek quad means four and lateral means sides. And so then we look at rectangles, squares, parallelograms, rhombi, and trapezoids. Great. Who cares? Really? But the way to help them care 
is to say we're going to explore these quadrilaterals. Let's explore them. How can we explore them? We have quadrilaterals all over the room. Go find them. Go find all the quadrilaterals you can. So what the kids did is they took every shape, every item in the room that had a quadrilateral shape to it and piled it in the middle of the room in, in, in a way that was okay. It wasn't a disaster. And then the next step was let's do a creative project. And so I had, for example, two children decide to make a 14-foot scroll. And they made a scroll of designs with quadrilaterals. And the goal here is that after a while they will finish their scroll after an acceptable amount of time, let's say a week of working on it a little bit every day, and then the following week I will require them to tell, to define what is a rhombus, what is a square. You need to know that a square is a quadrilateral that has four equal sides and four right angles. And they will maybe write a dictionary for me, a geometry dictionary. Or maybe they'll recite it from memory for me. And then we'll be done with quadrilaterals. But guaranteed, going from first introducing the concept to that long scroll and that amazing project that they were so excited about, to the final arrival of memorizing the concept, they will know that for the rest of their lives. Here at Escuela, we have mixed age classrooms. So for example, the junior elementary classrooms have ages six to nine in the class. So that's first, second, and third grade together. And then when they go on to the senior elementary, it's fourth, fifth, and sixth together as well. And it's a really powerful thing to have the, the mixed age classroom because the children learn from watching the older children. We know that children learn at different speeds, and we like to respect that it's very difficult to put them in a box of first grade, second grade, and third grade. And that's one of the reasons why we have a mixed age classroom, so that children can be in first grade and be able to do advanced long division if that's where they are cognitively. Mm -hmm. So you have uh, a mixture of things going on where the younger children are following the examples of the older children and uh, there's a lot of role modeling happening, a lot of leadership happening, and uh, academically the younger children are seeing the advanced skill set of the older children and wanting, that's a motivation for them to continue their learning and, ooh, I want to get to that, when do I get to do that lesson? And, during the two to three hour work periods, uh, the children are working, like I said, in a workshop sort of style where they're working in little groups on their own projects. And what the teacher is doing is giving small group lessons. And it's during those small group lessons that all the fundamental skills are taught in all the subject areas. And we do not teach all the children at once so that we can respect their time working on their own individual group projects and then we can pay closer attention to the smaller group that we're working with. And we're also um, teaching different concepts at different times according to where the children are academically. And so it's during that time that you might have a small group lesson for spelling or a small group lesson for, you know, beginning reading. I think my favorite part of teaching is the, is, the, is the learning with the children, those moments of watching them learn a new concept and the, it, we call them the aha moments when the light bulb goes off and, and they've learned something new that's an incredible concept and it just blows their mind. Those moments are really amazing and they happen quite often. And so it's, it's a pretty special thing to have a job where every day people are having epiphanies and children are learning new things that really mean something to them and they're learning how to read. Imagine that, learning how to read, that's an incredible thing. Learning how to write, learning how to research, really getting excited about learning to multiply. I mean, adults aren't very excited about math, but children are. So that's why I love my job, because it's a, 
sort of really organic experience of being in community with children who are excited about life.